Hello, hello, and welcome to the Notary Life with Kimmy podcast. I am also one of the trainers with Notary Educators, which includes myself, Kimmy Nunnally, Angela Johnson, and Alexis Franklin. We each own our own very successful notary businesses and teach notaries in all 50 states to be great and grow their own business. We will discuss general notary work, apostilles, ink fingerprinting, and the duties of a notary signing agent, and much, much more. For all of your notary needs, please visit notaryeducatorsllc.com. We hope you enjoy the show, and we wish you much success. Hello, hello, and welcome to Notary Life with Kimmy. Well, hey guys, I have to tell y'all, I have been having the clients from you know where recently, okay? And I don't know what's going on. It must just be a season, because I've been doing this now for a few years, and I've never had the kind of clients that I have come to you with recently. And the guy I talked about recently in that video about the green ink, he wasn't a pain or anything. He just used green ink. So if you didn't catch that video, go back and watch it. But today I want to talk about this client that did not want to pay. And I was completely done. I will be honest. I have never had an experience with a client that was this interaction. So it was a repeat client. Actually, this was the third time I had helped them. The third time. So they're from another country. They're, in fact, refugees from another country. I won't say from where because we're not going to get off into all that, right? But they are refugees from another country because they're having some problems over there. So I did a um, couple of documents already. This was my third time notarizing for them. Thought we were building a nice relationship. And after what happened this time, I think they're going to be blocked. I have never blocked a client before. I have never. But I don't like the way they treated me. I don't like the way they interacted with me. And I felt violated straight up. Okay, so let's talk about it. So again, this is my third time working with this person. They called, they needed the document redone. Not anything that I did, it was something that they did. They had to change something on it. So because it was a little involved, I charged them the full price. He thought that he should, and I'll tell you what it was. The fee was $50 for what I did for them. The fee was $50. And he knew the price before he got here. I told his translator, his person, that was helping him and it was no problem okay so when he goes to pay instead of him handing my handing me my fifty dollars okay he puts forty dollars down and says i need you to give me he said no discount discount because we have the language thing he could he could say discount he's learned that he's been here about a month he learned discount so i said no i said because the last time you were here i spent two and a half hours with them and I didn't charge any more. Okay. So I said, I'm going to make up some of my time and my money on this transaction. That's how I felt. This is my business. I get to run it how I want to. So somebody else might say, and literally all I did was change the name on the document and reprinted it. Okay. It was two documents. I changed the names on both and reprinted. So technically, was it a lot of work? Nope. Could I have did it for free? Probably, I probably could have, but that wasn't my business plan for this client, for this transaction, for everything. I wanted him to pay $50 because last time, like I said, they were here two and a half hours and I only charged them 50 the first time, okay, for the same thing. And the first time it took so long because I was actually preparing a document for them. So that's why I didn't want to tell you what I was doing because I don't, uh, we're not going to have a debate on should you prepare documents or not. Um, but in this case, I chose to prepare this document for my client, okay? So your state may or may not allow you to pre prepare documents. And that, that's not what this video is about. It's about how the client interacted with me. So I changed the name and I printed two copies as I already stated. He puts the $40 down. He tells me that he wants a discount. I say no. So the funny thing about it was my husband is normally here. They saw his truck was not here that day. So I think that's why he tried to play me. So he put the $40 down like, you gonna take this. And with an attitude, it wasn't like a ha ha, you know, here's 40, okay, let me get the other 10. No, he put the 40 down and he was like, I ain't giving you nothing else. Oh, really? Okay. So I'm standing there inside, I am steaming, okay? I am 
steamy. I don't know what to do. I'm almost shaking. I am so upset. You ever get that upset where you almost shaking and you start crying? It's not, you're not crying because you're weak. You're not crying because, you know, you don't know what to do. You're crying because either you're just so hurt by what somebody said to you or you're just so crushed in spirit by what they did to you. And that's how I felt with him. So I wasn't crying, but I was almost shaking. Okay. So I'm like, do I laugh it off? Do I get serious? Like I'm feeling on the inside, match that energy. Cause like I said, I, I was just like, almost like, okay. So then he pulls out a 20. So now we have two twenties, which is 40 and he has another 20. So I said, oh, he's going to be difficult. Now I got to try to get changed. Well, just so happened, Alexis was here in my house that day. So I asked her, I said, Hey, I called her. I said, hey, can you bring me $10? Cause I didn't want to pack up all my stuff. This is a lesson for you to never leave your supplies unattended. Okay. Never leave your notary supplies unattended. So I would have had to pack because I, I popped up my hatch on my car. You probably seen some of my videos. I work outside my trunk a lot. So I didn't want to close everything and come in here and get him some change. So his wife, I guess when I caught, made the phone call to Alexa, she's looking like, oh, this isn't going good. So the wife goes to the car. She comes back with $10 and she puts it down. So now I have, and I hand him back the 20. So I have my 50, right? So I tell his translator before they leave, because it's one of those things, you know, once you get a certain age in life, uh, some of you may be there and you don't know what I'm talking about. It's like, I'll be doggone if I'm taking that today, you know? It's like, okay, now I'm about to take off this nicey nice and we about to put on Detroit, okay? So I always tell people, I know how to do Detroit. But I, that's not my chosen um, way. I like to deal with people, okay? It's just not. I, I'm not that person. But if you take me there, all of you, wherever you're from, you know, you know how to do what they do in your city. Those other people <laughs> that you try not to be like, but you know how to do it if you have to. So I said to myself, you know what? I feel so violated. I am so upset. They are not leaving here without him knowing, him as a man knowing how that made me feel. So I told his translator, I said, I want you to tell him for me. And I'm very serious. Okay. I'm looking just like I'm looking at you in his camera. I said, I want you to tell him, I do not play about my business. Okay. I rendered a service and I want to be paid without all the extra. Okay. Just like this. No smile, no nothing. So he see my face. He see me moving and you know, we already can do that neck thing. So I'm doing all this and all that. Right. So she tells him, and he looks like, whoa. And the wife is looking like, oh, my God, what did we just do? And the wife was not actually being a participant. So I said they, but it was really him. The wife did not participate. She just went to get the $10, okay? I She kind of smirked and laughed when he was trying to play with me about the money. But again, it wasn't even like I felt like a jovial playing. It was more like he put the $40 down. And you just take this in, in the way he did it. You know, you can tell when somebody is kind of playing with you and then when somebody playing with you. Okay. And again, I told Angela what happened and she was like, he would have never did that. If Jeffrey was home, he would have never. And I know for a fact, he would not have did that either. So, um, so she tells him what I say and she says, and, and he just looked and he didn't apologize. It wasn't like she told, he told her to tell me, oh, I'm so sorry. I was only kidding. He did not. He stood his ground like I did it. And so what? And I told her again, I said, I want you to tell him one more time for me because I want to be crystal clear. I don't play about my business. Okay. So then she apologizes. She apologizes. The interpreter, friend of theirs, not an official interpreter. She apologizes. She said, that's what we do in our country. We're often, we always try to, you know, just kind of bargain. She said, that's what we do. That's how we do it. And I've been to other countries, you know, these different countries and you vac vacationing and they like, hey, man, or mom or whatever, you know, mamacita or, you know, hey, mama, you know, deal, deal, you know, what, it doesn't matter what race you want to insert. We've all experienced that if you've traveled at all outside the country, even here in the United States, you go downtown, you know, whatever. And like I told her, I said, it wasn't the fact that he asked for the discount. It was the way in which he did it. Okay. It was the way in which he did it. So I told my husband and I, like I said, he will be blocked. I, I'm no longer doing business with them. I'm not. 
I'm not. Now, I did send her a note because I always thank my client after the fact. Even though this happened, I sent her a note because she was the one interacting. I sent a message. I said, I do thank you again for your business. And she said, we thank you too. She said, I do apologize again on behalf of the client. That being said, no more business though. You're blocked. I've never blocked a client. Never. Never. And he will not be back. Because what will you do next time? Next time, he'll just say, I'm not going to pay you at all. So I don't even play like that. You know, again, I don't have time for that. And what I told Alexis when I came in, because I was almost like I told you earlier, almost shaking. I didn't know what I was going to do with them. But half of me wanted to take the document, tear it up, and you get off my property before I call the police. Okay, that was one option. All this went through my mind so quick. My other option was give them the document. And I just steal my nice side. <laughs> Give them the document and you will be blocked. Okay? Get off my property. Now. ASAP. Okay? But I didn't go with any, either of those options. I wanted my money. And they gave it to me. Okay? So, some lessons for this. Because people are going to say, well, when do you ask for money? Uh, just to answer this question really quick. I always ask. I always let them pay at the end of the transaction. I don't ask for people to pay up front. I just don't. After that interaction, it made me want to have people prepay, but I'm not going to change my whole business plan because of one person. That's just not fair, right? And that's just not my preferred method. I prefer they pay after services are rendered. And I always say because when I get to the to the signing, it may be any number of reasons why I don't want to do it. And now I got to go through the hassle of trying to refund you your money and you know, did you pay with a debit card? Did you pay with cash? Yeah, what did you pay with? I don't feel like all that. I like to keep my business nice and simple. So worst case, had he not paid, then I would have just took it as a loss and wrote it off on my taxes. And he's still going to be blocked. <laughs> so again, this is the first time, guys, I have ever had to come with this kind of story. Um, it's just been a rough couple of weeks with me and clients. I, I, I'm just wondering what's going on. And it's so funny. It, um... When I had my daycare and it was getting time for me to wrap it up, my husband would say, Kim, it seems like you're screaming at them kids more. But in this case, it's not that I'm tired of my business. I love being a notary. I love everything. All things notary. It's what I do. It's in my blood. But, whoo, have to deal with him. And again, I ain't going to make no whole dis decision and business based on one psycho out there, you know, one client that went bad. But I just wanted to share this story with you so you can be aware that, you know, it's not um, always rosy, but 99% of the time it is. Myself, Angela, Jeffrey, we all love what we do. We, you know, all of us, we do. Angela loves to being a notary. Alexis loves it. Jeffrey loves it. We love the people we get to meet. And 90% of the people, like I said, it, 99, it goes pretty well. I had one cycle this time. And he will be blocked. So, I did, the thumbnail was not just hype. I had to block a client. Yep. And this goes for any business out there. You could be doing hair. You could be shining shoes. You could be cooking meals. Whatever you're doing, if the client don't pay and you don't want to have that relationship with them anymore, sever the relationship. It's better th than you going to jail. Okay? Or somebody getting hurt. Because I was telling somebody else, you play that kind of game up in Detroit with the right one. <laughs> okay? Now, I'm not that person. I'm not that person. I don't pack. I'm not doing none of that. Okay? So, but I'm just saying, he pulled that with the right person, with the right person. So, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, guys. But until next time, this is Notary Life with Kimmy. What would you have done? I'm just curious. What would you have done? What would you have done? All right. Bye, guys. Thank you again for listening to the Notary Life with Kimmy podcast. We would love to be a part of your notary journey. Please visit us at notaryeducatorsllc.com for all of your notary training needs. Also, please feel free to join the Notary Life with Kimmy YouTube channel, where Kimmy has over 400 videos that will help you to grow and build a successful notary business. Until the next episode, we wish you much success on your journey. Bye.